when I first got there, uh, they said I was a fluffhead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> that all I was interested in was uh, clothes and right. shopping and, you know, all that. Decorating and so forth. Yeah. Right. Then, then, I guess after Ronnie was shot, I had, there was a kind of a quiet period there. They called a truce for a while. Yeah. Right. Um, then all of a sudden I was running the world. Mm -hmm. I was I was nuclear decisions and all of that. Wasn't that charming mm -hmm. and just so real? That was Nancy Reagan, of course, after leaving the White House, sitting down with Johnny Carson and talking about some of the public's misconceptions about her during her husband's administration. And now one of the president's top advisors joins us. He is the former Secretary of State, James Baker. He wrote today in part this on the passing of Mrs. Reagan, saying, quote, Nancy Reagan was one half of the team that restored our nation's pride and confidence in itself and reinvigorated America's leadership role in the world. She was her husband's closest advisor, his constant protector, and most importantly, the love of his life. Secretary Baker joins us now from Houston at Rice University from the Baker Institute, his Center for Public Affairs. Mr. Secretary, first, my condolences, and I've been in the hallways of your institute. You've got the photos of the President and Mrs. Reagan and you, your reflections and remembrances on this sad day. Well, it is a sad day, Eric, and thanks for having me. Uh, Nancy Reagan was a remarkable woman, and what I said in that statement, I firmly believe uh, she was... Uh, she was his uh, absolute uh, partner in achieving what he achieved. She was one half of the team. She, without her, uh, none of what he accomplished, uh, in my view, could have been accomplished. She had extraordinarily uh, fine, sensitive political antenna, uh, antenna with respect to communications policy and, and things like that. She did not try to insert herself into every policy decision in the White House. But on the big ticket items, uh, we on the staff always knew that if you had Nancy Reagan on your side, you had a hell of a lot better <laughs> chance of seeing what you wanted to see accomplish, accomplish. Uh, tell me a bit about that. I mean, she was influential uh, somewhat, obviously, with Gorbachev and with the Soviet Union, dealing with the summit, kind of pushing the president uh, on some that's, of those issues. That's correct. What, what, well, did that's, she do with, what did she tell you? How did that work? Well, that's correct, but but it didn't work. It it wasn't the case of her uh, picking up the phone and calling the chief of staff and saying, "Here's what what I think ought to be done" or anything. It was it was more a case of if we were trying to uh, pursue, let's say, tax reform, fundamental tax reform, which President Reagan was successful in accomplishing in 1986, first time in a hundred years uh, it, anybody had been successful in trying to do that, uh, and there were bumps in the road. Uh, with respect to uh, whether the president would or would not do this or that or the other, go up to the hill, do this. Uh, she was always an ally. If you wanted him to go to the hill and you had her on your, on your side, uh, you could generally expect after a while that he might be willing to go to the hill. She was very influential with him, uh, but she really was his protector. And she could judge uh, people on the staff as to whether they were paddling in their own canoe or whether they were pursuing the president's agenda. Where, where did that come from? How did she have that and, and how was she able to use that judgment to the betterment, not just of the president and, and of you and, and the staff, but for our country? Well, you know, the president, saw, the president was totally guileless. Uh, he never saw any uh, evil in anybody. Uh, he, 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 he thought the best of everybody. but. But Nancy was a bit more, uh, a bit more realistic and a bit more pragmatic. Uh, I think she understood that uh, that politics uh, wasn't beanbag, and she was very good about making sure that the staff uh, was pursuing the president's agenda. Uh, and and you know she did have a <clears throat> a significant voice in staffing decisions, as you know, Eric. I. <laughs> I ran, I led two campaigns against President Reagan before he came to me after he won the presidency in 1980 and asked me to be his White House chief of staff. Uh, I don't think that's ever going to happen again in, in, uh, in American politics, but it was a pretty good indication of the broad gauge nature 
of this of this president, president elect at that time. Uh, why did he do that? He did that because they they recognized that they needed someone there who understood how Washington worked, who'd been there before, and that uh, the impetus for that decision came from Nancy Reagan. Uh, and from Stu Spencer and from Mike Deaver, but particularly from Nancy Reagan. You, know, you wrote about that in your wonderful book, uh, Work Hard, Study, Staying Out of Politics, how she did uh, have an eye for talent. And she said, you said, quote, Nancy Reagan soon became an ally and lobbied her husband to appoint me. So she, uh, she definitely did have a sense and an influence that, that bettered, bettered us all. Particularly with respect to personnel, Eric. Uh, to some extent, to a lesser extent, perhaps, with respect to policy. But she didn't have uh, policy views that she held viscerally or anything. If it was good, if she thought it was good for the president politically, uh, that's what she would be for. If she thought it was good for his, uh, for his legacy, that's what she would be for. And, of course, after he left office, she has been uh, the, the absolute, total, and complete protector of his legacy, and she's done a, a reasonably credible job if you look at the at what history has written about his two terms as president. And finally, Mr. Baker, how do you think she will be remembered? Well, I think she will be remembered, uh, as I say in that in that statement uh, that you read at the beginning of our interview here. She'll be remembered, I think, as his as his partner in accomplishing much of what he accomplished as president of the United States. She will be remembered as his uh, faithful uh, love, the love of his life, uh, and she will be remembered as, uh, I think, uh, one of his closest advisors as well. Secretary of State James Baker, we thank you for joining us and sharing your insight and thoughts on your friend, Nancy thank Reagan. Thank you. As you remember her today. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. And we'll be right back.